Well, hello friends. I am super excited for today's video where we are going to go over the top five budget-friendly countries for digital nomads. But before we get into the list, I wanna say a big thank you to Lenovo, Google, and Qualcomm for sponsoring today's video. And I definitely think that the new Lenovo Chromebook Duet 5 is perfect for any digital nomads or for anybody who has a busy lifestyle. You guys know that I travel a lot for my job and just in these past three years, I have been to over 12 different countries. Ideally, I like the gear I use to be powerful, compact, and that can keep me always connected to the work I do and the people I love. The new Lenovo Chromebook Duet 5 is a very versatile 2-in-1 computer that has a super long battery life, up to 15 hours on one charge. It is also perfect for video calls and live streaming since it has front and rear FHD cameras that are really high quality. It also makes it really easy to stay focused and productive with all the necessary work programs like Microsoft Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, as well as all of your favorite apps from the Play Store. Another really cool feature about the Lenovo Chromebook Duet 5 is that it can transform from a laptop to a tablet in a matter of seconds. And what's also really cool is that the two can connect remotely by Bluetooth. The tablet has a really sturdy kickstand and it just lets you customize your work environment to what suits you best. I really like bringing this two-in-one laptop on trips where I don't wanna feel weighed down, but still be able to work remotely if something unexpected comes up. My favorite feature is definitely the super long battery life because it's not always easy to have an outlet available when you're traveling or snagging the last one at a cafe. Definitely one of the top benefits of being a digital nomad is having a fresh new work environment whenever you want. So I've really been loving being able to take this computer with me all over Calgary, being able to work during travel and even in the middle of nature. So if you guys are looking for a very versatile on-the-go computer that will always keep you connected, I would definitely recommend the new Lenovo Chromebook Duet 5. I'm gonna have the link in the description so you guys can check it out. And a big thank you to Lenovo, Google, and Qualcomm for sponsoring today's video. So let's jump into the first country on our list, which I am probably at just arriving when you guys are watching this video, which is Indonesia. This country really needs no introduction as a digital nomad hub or specifically Bali, I should say. Now to give you guys an idea about budget, uh, I'm actually flying into Jakarta to start off my trip, the capital city, and I am staying at a minimum three, but I think it's actually a four star hotel in a good part of the city, central part of the city, breakfast included for 35 US dollars a night. I was even seeing some private rooms go for as low as like 15, $20 if you didn't really want anything fancy. And if you're staying at a hostel, almost for sure it should be less than ten dollars a night food and transport overall is very inexpensive as well and sim cards i think the average price is about 20 us dollars but that's a really large package with lots of data so a lot better than the prices that we pay here in canada i will say but i think the top thing that i've really heard from a lot of digital nomads of why they like specifically Bali so much is because there is such a community there and a very young community at that. Now, speaking of paperwork to actually go to Bali and stay there a long time, it is supposed to be in the works of an actual digital nomad visa that is going to be coming out. But at this point in time, nothing is confirmed. It's just supposed to be something where you can stay there up to five years and live tax free if you make all of your money online. But for the time being, there are some longer term sort of visas that are available to remote workers where I think there's one that you can apply for that's 60 days and then you can extend it for another 60 days, one or two times. But for me personally, I'm only going there for a month or two this time around. So I'm just getting the easy visa upon arrival that you pay $30 for if you want to possibly extend before the end of your 30 days and then get another 30 days. Number two on our list is one of my favorite countries that I went to in 2020 and was just so impressed. So impressed, you guys. 
Bulgaria. I think I spent almost three months in Bulgaria, if I'm not mistaken. I liked it that much. I kept extending when I was going to leave to go over to North Macedonia, but I kept coming up with like more things that I wanted to see in the country. It was so easy to get around. I was shocked how well people spoke in English there, even in your average corner shop, and everybody was just so nice. In uh, downtown Sofia, I feel like that was the most expensive place as far as apartment costs where this was two years ago i was paying about 40 45 us per night uh at a really nice like really nice one bedroom apartment within walking distance of everything but as soon as you leave sofia as soon as you leave the capital city i found that the prices drop quite substantially and some of the smaller sorts of cities that I went to and especially some of the really beautiful places um, in the mountains that I stayed like my god I was staying in the loveliest little hotel rooms for like $20 a night breakfast included. The other really cool thing about Bulgaria is that it has extremely fast internet and once again for very low prices, like especially in the larger centers like Sofia and Varna, I was shocked that I was having two gigabyte large files, like uploading my YouTube videos was going through in 15 minutes or less. Now, as far as how long you can stay in Bulgaria as a digital nomad, if you are from an EU country or from Canada, USA, I think as a whole it is three months visa free. But there is a sort of digital nomad visa, though I think they do call it something slightly different, like a long-term residence permit or something like that. But if you Google Bulgaria digital nomad visa, it will come up. And it's basically a period of either six months or 12 months that you're able to remain in the country. I don't think there's any big processing fees. So definitely a great option if you wanna stay in Europe for a longer period of time, don't have to spend a lot of money. It's very safe. People are really kind. I was very impressed by Bulgaria. And country number three, I was just there, Mexico. This is nothing new for all my viewers from the US because Mexico is definitely the top place that uh, Americans immigrate to or spend longer periods of time in. It's probably the case for Canadians as well, though there's a lot of Canadians that actually spend the winters in the States. So kind of between those two countries is where a lot of North Americans <laughs> go to spend their winters. Nobody comes to Canada, nobody. So it definitely gets my vote as the place to be stationed in Central or South America if you are on a budget because of course there's so many people that go to Costa Rica I haven't been yet it's supposed to be amazing but it's not inexpensive like Costa Rica is not what I would call budget friendly Mexico also has a very generous visa free uh, option for any Canadians Americans and I think as well anybody from the EU where you can stay up to six months as a tourist. I personally wouldn't need more time than that unless I'm actually choosing it as a place to live, which speaking of which is apparently one of the easier uh, permanent residencies to actually get. The main requirement is to prove that you have made over $2,600 a month for the last six months from work that you do online. So it absolutely makes sense why it's such a popular destination. And I think in the next few years, the more that people keep working remotely, I think it is going to continue to be a very large destination specifically for Canadians and Americans because the other nice thing about Mexico is that it's on the same time zone, right? Number four, to no one's surprise is Thailand. I feel like even before Bali really became a thing, I feel like Thailand has always been popular, not only for just backpackers, remote workers, but especially retirees. Thailand is kind of a one-stop shop for every generation. Most people absolutely love it when they go there. I absolutely loved my time there when I went 
I guess it was early 2021, back when you had to do a two week long hotel quarantine. I have never put in so much effort to get into a country, but I think it was absolutely worth it because like they said, you are never going to see, hopefully never going to see Thailand this empty again. So just like all the other countries on our list, Thailand is obviously very budget friendly, has great cafes, co-working spaces. It's definitely um, tailored, you know, towards that demographic. If you are in the digital nomad sort of hubs like Bangkok, Chiang Mai, Phuket, all of those places are super tailored towards people working remotely. Overall, it is a very safe country, which, you know, as a solo female traveler, I think is very important. I think out of all the countries on my list, Thailand and Bulgaria would probably be my picks as the two countries that if safety is really a concern for you, or if you're not used to traveling by yourself and want to have a lower <laughs> risk for any sorts of incidents happening, I think Thailand and Bulgaria are very, very safe. Now, as far as how long you can stay there, kind of similar to Indonesia, I guess, and a lot of the countries in Southeast Asia, if you are Canadian, American, and once again, I don't know, I don't know with the EU <laughs> what the rules are for them, but uh, for us, you can go in visa free for a month and then you can extend it for another 30 days. The next best thing to stay there longer is to apply for a two month long visa. You do have to pay, I think about an 80 or $100 fee for that one and send it to the consulate before you leave your country. And then you can also extend it for another 30 days once you're already in Thailand. And last, but certainly not least, the fifth country on our list, I feel isn't mentioned enough in the digital nomad community, even though it's definitely a hub, like it's definitely already a digital nomad hub, but I believe it's gonna get even bigger, which is Turkey. I went to Turkey in early 2020 before chaos ensued all over the world. And let me tell you, I was very surprised, like pleasantly surprised, not that I was expecting, you know, anything really negative out of going to Turkey, but I was just especially impressed by Istanbul. And then also we went out to the coastal city of Izmir, which is absolutely beautiful. And just on a whole, it's very easy to get around, very budget friendly, uh, even for like domestic flights. I remember we took a flight from Izmir to the airport that's near Cappadocia and it was like $20. Like <laughs> maybe people that are European are used to those kinds of prices with like Ryanair and all that kind of stuff. But like coming from Canada, where to go one hour from Saskatchewan to Alberta, the buggers are trying to charge me $250 for that. And that's not even with luggage. It just blows my mind, like how, how do they still make money when a seat on an airplane for like an hour long flight is only $20. And just to lastly touch on how long you can stay there, uh, if you're Canadian or from the US, you do actually have to apply for an e-visa, which sure is a bit more of a bother than just a visa on arrival, but overall it is super streamlined. I think I got mine, you know, within 24 hours of applying for it. The website's really easy to use and you can choose in between a 30 day uh, tourist visa or there is also, there's also another one that is multiple entry for three months, which I think would be the better choice if you kind of wanted to stay there a bit of a longer time. And bonus guys, just gonna put a quick little bonus in here. You could say, how could you make a digital nomad list without kind of including, you know, the king of, I think one of the best digital nomad visas that there are, which is Georgia. They do have, in my opinion, one of the best digital nomad permanent residency, even just going there as a tourist, one of the most open sort of programs. They are supposed to have a very low cost of living. The people are super nice. So Georgia absolutely deserves a place on this list. 
I just haven't been there yet. But that is it guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video. As always, let me know if you have any countries that you would personally recommend that you think are a great fit for digital nomads that are on a budget. Thank you once again to Lenovo, Google, and Qualcomm for sponsoring today's video. I'm gonna have my link in the description where you guys can check out their awesome new Lenovo Chromebook Duet 5, super cool computer, go check it out. And as always, I'm sending you guys so much love. I hope you're having a fantastic day and keep being your own kind of beautiful. Bye guys.